Hi, this is Francis from A Plus Tutoring. In this chapter, I'm going to show you how to solve the integral in chapter 7.4, number 14 in Stewart textbook. Now, as you see in this integral, it's a partial fraction question. So how can I separate this fraction into two parts? So I have 1 over x plus a times x plus b, which is equals to a well, I'll, I'll use another letter instead of a because it's confusing with the little a and little b here. So I'll use, let's say, c over x plus a plus d over x plus b. Okay, so if you want to have the common denominator, so you have to multiply it out. So I get 1 equals to c times x plus b plus d times x plus a. Okay, so this is how we do partial fraction to find out what is the value of c and d. Now I want to let x equals to minus b. This is assuming saying that a not equals to b though, right? So if we assume that a is not equal to b, then we can say that x equals to minus b, then this is going to be 1 equals to, well this whole thing is gone, right, because it would be 0, and this thing will be d times minus b plus a. Okay, if I let x equals to minus a, so I get 1 equals to c times minus a plus b. Now as you see here, the difference between this one and this one is just the sign, the sign difference. So I know that if I rewrite this into 1 equals to minus c, I have minus b plus a. Okay, so I know that d must be equals to minus c. So d must be equals to minus c. Now if I have d equals to minus c, what is c? c I would say that is, I would, I would try to use, uh, let's say I would try to use this one, right? Instead of that one, well, I just, by preference, I just want to use one over minus a plus b, this is equal to c. Okay, this is how we get to this here. So I know that c is basically one over b minus a, or minus a plus b. And my d is going to be minus one over minus a plus b because I know that d is equal to minus c, right? So now that I have my fraction into two parts, so let's do that. So I have my integral to be c, which is one over b minus a, and then I have my one over x plus a, minus, because my d is negative here, so I have minus 1 over b minus a times 1 over x plus b. So this whole thing is dx. So I can separate this into two integrals, right? Now this is a constant here, b minus a. Now the integral of 1 over x plus a is ln of x plus a, because we don't have any coefficient in front, so the answer is just ln of x plus a. So I can say that this is going to be 1 over b minus a, ln of x plus a. Subtract 1 over b minus a, ln of x plus b. Oh, this is basically my absolute value. And then plus c, obviously. Now you can factor out the 1 over b minus a in front and then group the ln. So this is going to be 1 over b minus a, ln of x plus a minus, well, ln of x plus a minus ln of x plus b, which is a division. So x plus a over x plus b. And then plus c. So this is my final answer when a is not equals to b. What if a is equals to b? Okay. So this is my answer for a not equals to b, okay? Now let's see what happened if a is equals to b. So my integral is going to be 
dx over x plus a square. Now, the integral of this is basically easy to do, right? It's just a simple substitution. So I'll use substitution u equals to x plus a, right? du equals to dx. So I have my integral to become integral of 1 over u squared du, right? This is basically integral of u to the power of minus 2 du. Now the integral of that is basically u minus 1 over minus 1 plus c, okay? So this is just minus 1, minus 1 over u, which is x plus a plus c. So this is my answer if a is equals to b. So this is how we solve this problem here if we don't know the variable of a and b. You use partial fraction if a is not equal to b. If a is equal to b, you can just use a simple substitution. Now for more information about partial fraction, please visit my website goforaplus.com.